This video is sponsored by Bright Cellars. Bright Cellars is a monthly wine subscription box that helps people discover wines that they will love. All you have to do is take a less than 30 second quiz and the algorithm matches you with wines you're guaranteed to like based on your taste profile. Every wine that is sent to you comes with a card that tells you how to serve it and other tips like dishes to pair it with. Serve it at a dinner party and you'll be the toast of your neighborhood. Once you've tried your wines, you can go into your account and rate them. The algorithm will then take those ratings into account when selecting your next batch of personalized wines. It's like having your own online selection Bright Cellars Delight Guarantee means if you don't love a bottle that you receive, they will send you a replacement in your next box. I really love it because the packaging is recyclable and plastic free. I took the quiz and received four delightful bottles of wine. My very favorite was Folk and Fable Private Reserve Red Blend. CinemaSins fans get 60% off their first four bottle box. That's just $38 for four bottles. Go to brightcellars.com slash cinemasins to get started. The link is in the video description. Three seconds of Justice League goes. Well, this is a cool ass looking WB logo variation. Hmm. Okay, let's take a sin off here as a gesture of goodwill. DC Comics. I guess I appreciate the recap of the stakes for the last movie, but why are we rehashing Superman's death again? It's not like this version of Justice League isn't going to bring him back. So why do we even care that this happens? I mean, Batman movies stopped showing Bruce Wayne's parents getting killed after the first time they did that back in 1989, right? Right? Previously, in an even worse movie, only this time it's slower. Aw oh, man, they dragged poor Amy Adams into this, didn't they? Again! Don't worry folks, if this evil alien super being comes back to life after Superman has stabbed it with kryptonite, Batman is here at the ready to grapple hook it back to death. Also, I get it. The greatest superhero in the world looks like he's pretty f***ing hurt. Maybe even dying. But he's still alive now, and currently screaming in pain! Batman and Diana have been all over this fight up until now, so why aren't they at least moving that way to try and help? Oh sure, just erase Joss Whedon from this project completely! Wait, that's a thing now? We're doing that across the board? No. Okay then, no sin here. Just move along. Zack Snyder thought the only thing that would make the whole mother box situation more nonsensical is to stick one of those powerful motherfuckers in a f***ing coat closet. Man, Superman's screams of anguish are so powerful that they can make it all the way to Gotham City, which we know is and has always been a short distance across the bay from Metropolis. The comics have long been clear that this is a San Francisco, Oakland-like situation. Doesn't Jesse Eisenberg's Luther seem exactly like the kind of guy who would be cracking wise right now about how he's standing navel deep in a pool of alien goo water? Why is Superman's hollering making it only to the characters we know in this universe? Can normal humans hear them? Why is it even necessary for the metas to take note of this strange noise? Don't they watch the news? According to the end of the last movie, every network was covering that f***ing fight between the Discount Avengers and Abomination. Man, whoever piloted this drone through all this CGI deserves a raise. I see they have their own hockey arena in Themyscira coming up. Do these warriors seriously spend all day every day just standing around this mother box? I know, I know, it's important and stuff, but do all these ladies have to guard it? Hell, the one in the US has apparently been hanging out with the snow boots and the Land's End jackets for the last millennium and it's been fine until now. Cool, Snyder fixed the almost total omission of J.K. Simmons' character from the last cut. I bet he has a huge character arc now. I love the Queen! Just now? Shouldn't you have done that at the first moment this f***ing thing moved in the last thousand years? This is Bruce Wayne. This movie thinks Bruce Wayne would camp out on a snowy mountaintop with a small fire and a horse, and this movie is already funnier than the 40-year-old virgin. I guess he opted for the bat horse instead of the bat plane or bat copter. The f*** is this even? Didn't he ride that horse all the way from Gotham? Oh, f*** yourself right in the... <laughs> you, movie! I see now why we needed the full four-hour cut of this film, so that we could fully appreciate the entire f***ing journey Bruce takes to Hoth to find Arthur. Seriously, the entirety of the Lord of the Rings franchise had less footage of walking in the mountains than this opening scene. I won't be needing this anymore. Also, <laughs> the idea that the horse could literally walk the teetering mountaintop's edge earlier, but needs to be abandoned here because the upcoming terrain is too much for it. <laughs> Yep, because this is how movies normally go. Is there a reason we're getting the perspective of this conversation through a dirty-ass interior window? Are we peeping on these people? That just feels weird, even for this movie. How dare this dog speak to us like children? What's up this guy's ass? Gili here just offered the town $25,000 to talk to Aquaman, and doesn't look like he's f***ing around at all. Sure, he's asking questions, but is he posing any threat to the village at all that would get this elder all fired up? Dressed like a bat. You're out of your mind, Bruce Wayne. Maybe, but not because he dresses like a bat, right? Even if Arthur doesn't want to participate in the Justice League, why would he think this idea is crazy? Especially if there is a supernatural threat coming to Earth. This f***ing dialogue goes for all style over substance. It comes off like a bad parody of a comic book movie.
sea shanties. Also, I could say movie has time for this a million times in this f***ing thing. But this is not even 13 minutes into the film. What does an ad hoc Aquaman fangirl choir do for anyone that's trying to get into this f***ing story? That sweet sweater is sweltering with sweat and seawater, so see what the problem is? You may think this cut of the film was rated R because of some stray f***s or extra violent content, but I know that it was spiced up by all this hot foreclosure action. God, I'm getting erect just looking at this real estate sign. But what about the horse? I know we bag on Zack Snyder for the overuse of slow-mo, but he's seriously using that shit on Lois Lane walking out of a goddamn coffee shop, and do you see my point now? Gee, how do we make sure everyone knows Lois Lane is sad? Hmm, whatever will we do. Is this a thing? Not Superman specifically, but hanging commemorative banners on this bridge in England? Is that a thing? If the movie invented it, that's a sin. If it's a normal thing, but the movie perverted it for fictional Superman, that's a sin. Why does he need to knock on the van door here? Didn't the people in the back see him get out? It's not like he's giving the all-clear indication, considering there is still a heavily armed guard standing at the front of the entrance. Come and witness the excitement of an entire heist seen via briefcase cam. Ruby sure does spend an inordinate amount of time on this failed heist, especially early on. I guess it's supposed to show how brazen criminals are now that Superman is gone and how badass Wonder Woman is, but we already know that sh the dick does this have to do with any of the rest of the main narrative? One minute. One minute! This motherfucker has clearly watched too many James Bond movies. If you're gonna leave this little time before the bomb goes off, why not just do it immediately? It's like they're begging for Wonder Woman to have time to come to the rescue. Who are you? The lasso of Hestia compels you to reveal the truth. Do you need to explain the truth rope to the person you're using the truth rope on, or do you just want need the truth? Well, you do what? You're too late. The countdown's already begun. This lasso of truth is pretty shitty at its fucking job. Who was the engineer that decided to make little beep noises for every second that ticks off the clock? That fucking guy has a flair for the dramatic. Why isn't his ass here? This scene of Wonder Woman kicking all the ass in the room kicks, well, all the ass. And I want to remove a sin. I really do. But we get so fucking little of this moving forward in this movie, which definitely has room for it. And I'm just pissed enough to add five instead. Wonder Woman commits murder in front of a bunch of school children. Cool, cool, cool. Can I be like you someday? Well, no, you weren't born in Themyscariamatologiville like Wonder Woman was, but it's cute that you have aspirations. The Themyscarian women arrive to what can only be described as Irish music? It's weird. Wait, the queen is just now getting to the mother box Temple of Doom? I called for her way back at the beginning of the movie, right after Superman died. And since then, Clark's been buried, Bruce has made it all the way to Arthur's village, and Diana saved those kids. The f*** took her so long? It has slept for thousands of years since the first age. Oh... Evil does not sleep. Oh yeah? And how do you explain the fact that there are only two CinemaSins videos every week? Someone is taking a break. Oh yeah, baby! This dude took a magic carpet ride, arriving on an earish split and loud and boomer just to meet these straight shooting women to tell them that he's born to be wild. Yo, these warriors were waiting for a chance to f*** this box up. Remember when they had their bows and swords drawn and sh Now an angry looking fellow arrives with a bunch of winged freaks and they do nothing? I have come to enlighten you to the great darkness! Honestly, a little more darkness here would have helped you look more realistic. As it is, you look like a 3D poster I might find at Spencer Gifts after all the reasonable shoppers have made their purchases. As I watch this battle between parademons and Wonder Women, I'm left with the thought that sometimes movies are trimmed down for a reason. Why didn't the queen do this at the first sign of Steppenwolf? You'd really think an ancient goddess of a leader would have better timing. These little natty motherfuckers were taken out by regular arrows and swords just a few minutes ago, but they survived this? They gave you 70 million and you still couldn't make this shit here look real? What did you spend it on? As the flying thing takes the glowing box from the horse riding archer lady, I'm left to wonder, what movie am I even watching again? This game of hot box potato goes on for some time. And even if I hadn't seen the other version of the movie, I'd know that it means jack shit to the ultimate end of Steppenwolf ending up with his prize. Got it! Go! God damn, when are the Transformers gonna show up and fucking help these people? Oh, no, no, queen. Why do you fight? Why not just kill her, though? Why do this condescending speech nonsense? I guess Steppenwolf can summon his own Bifrost anytime he needs to, but he uses it so rarely that I'm convinced every time he does it, it lowers his sperm count or something. Definitely sad about this unnamed warrior gal and her unnamed horse, who were dead. It's sad. Even more sad because we knew her and her horse so well. We have to light the ancient warning fire. The fire has not burned for 5,000 years. Does that matter here? Didn't discount Michelle Monaghan see what just happened? This is like me telling my mom, I'm gonna make tacos, and her replying, you haven't had those since last Tuesday. Like, that's at all relevant, mom. Ah, uh, that did not feel like a natural place to cut. Which only further serves to make me think this movie is presented in six parts because it's so f***ing long, and not because six separate but connected stories really needed to be told. It's toxic. That's good. 
Exxon Mobile. Follow the sins of the mother boxes. Find the missing two. Fuck you, Wolfie. Do it yourself. This is exactly as useless as Thanos sending out Ebony Maw, Proxima Midnight, and oh, who's the other guy? There? Jack Black. I don't know. Anyway, fuck this outsourcing of the most important task in the world to this villain. It's still weird to me that this dude is named Steppenwolf instead of Prism Guy or Reflector Man. Morphin Mighty Mo. It has to do with him. I made a promise to him on his grave. You flip-flopping asshole. You tried to kill him shortly before making that promise on his grave. This is like Mike Tyson vowing to protect Evander Holyfield forever, but making that promise half an hour after biting off half the dude's ear. Also, last movie you were even more emphatically saying, if there's even a chance. It was goofy then and it's goofy now, but now it's also against character. Why would Bruce Wayne travel on a private big ass passenger jet instead of a small private plane that seats a few people? There's no reason for him to fly a 747 around like the god damn president using a pocket memo cassette voice recorder in the 21st f***ing century. God, everything has to be a f***ing ceremony with these Amazons, man. Why'd they wait until now to do the fiery Gondor beacon lighting? They know Steppenwolf is here, and they should have shot their shot hours ago. Warn my daughter that war has come and protect her. That's asking a lot of a single arrow, but okay. I don't care if it's a weekday, holiday, Bastille Day, Thanksgiving Day, Training Day, Boxing Day, or Doris Day. Ain't no f***ing way there's not a giant line queued up outside the Louvre. You might as well disappear when you walk out of here. Yep. What this movie definitely needed was more cagey dialogue about where she goes when she's Wonder Womaning. Really rounds out the story to know that her co-workers sometimes notice she has long absences. Next, you'll be giving me a scene of the Wayne board where the chairman points out that Bruce misses half the meetings. I know the Louvre is full of ancient art, but this tube TV set seems like it's the most outdated item in this entire museum. What the f*** is that computer-sized panel inside his front door? He doesn't touch it, so it's not a security panel. Unless he's just terrible at security, but even if it's a security panel, that's f***ing huge! This f***ing thing could play video games and Blu-rays and sh My god! The box isn't safe here. You mean it's not safe in this charming little brownstone in a completely unsecured neighborhood nearby to the research facility? How do we arrive at that conclusion? They did a full arson investigation at this ancient site, but they left the f***ing inciting arrow here? <laughs> Yes, this definitely makes the movie different. I'm so glad we got the she shows us that her ancient knowledge includes making a basic torque scene. My god, this changes everything. Wonder Woman understands kerosene? Also, this is very much Wonder Woman the Mummy. And that'd be okay with me if Brendan Fraser were anywhere around here. You know, for an underground secret tomb layer, this sh is tremendously well lit. I don't know exactly where this is, but I have to say their sweater game is strong, man. Like Ransom from Knives Out is even getting a boner looking at all this cable knit. Wait, am I taking a sit off, adding one, or just making an observation? I got distracted. Since it was that easy to take me out of the movie, here's a sin. It's on him. Stealing. Why does Arthur even drink? He's a goddamn god, right? There's no way he can get drunk, especially off a measly quarter bottle of whiskey. I know he's got a human side from his dad, but it seems like the god part is much stronger, especially considering how his standalone movie turned out. Why does he even bother putting shirts on if he keeps ripping them off before he dives back into the water? That's just f***ing wasteful. And you'd think a dude like Arthur would be much more into conservation. This should have been called the Slow Motion League. You're the rightful king of Atlantis. Expositional chastising. Chast position? I realize he's trying to set up the whole thing here with future bigger, badder, big bads, but this scene just makes Steppenwolf seem weak and sniveling, undercutting his supposed menacingness later on. You know, I paid millions of dollars for this building's security. You got your money's worth. Took me almost a minute to disable it. This is it, folks. This was the scene that finally made me realize why the Snyder Cut was so important. I get it now. I get it so hard I'm ordering a t-shirt. I triple get it. Prototype troop carrier. I once knew a man who would have loved to fly it. Goddamn Diana. I know Steve Trevor had some dreamy eyes, but that was over a century ago. Move the f*** on. Amazons before their betrayal and enslavement and guardians from the stars. Wait, did she just yada yada both the enslavement of the Amazonians and the emergence of the f***ing Green Lantern? That shit seems pretty important, no? Couldn't they have just landed the ship on the ground? As Darkseid waged war on Earth. Are we really still narrating over an hour into this thing? Mother boxes? Is Bruce seriously continuing to turn a f***ing wrench while Diana is literally telling him about the end of the world? To conquer, three boxes have to synchronize and join together into the unity. What the f***ing balls are you talking about? I have many questions about this movie, but one of the most unexpectedly burning ones is, why do the parademons need the steampunk goggles? Zeus and his son Ares. Every time Wonder Woman makes like old-timey mythology gods are real, it makes me laugh, but then it makes me angry that they aren't doing more to kick all the ass. A golden age of heroes fighting together to defend life on Earth. Seriously, Diana got all this sh from a few hieroglyphs drawn on the walls of a small chamber? Wait, there's an experienced Lantern Corps person here? And he doesn't end the battle by snapping his fingers? The f**k? 
Why would there be only one Lantern Corps person here anyway if this was such an important battle? And why did the one guy shoot a flimsy green laser out of his chest and then get beaten down like a chump instead of, oh, I don't know, unleashing the actual full power of the Green Lanterns against this bitch villain and ending it all right here and now? Green Lantern peeps are f***ing mega powerful, you dopes. Guys, I know Darkseid is pretty f***ing strong, but isn't Zeus, like, the gaudiest god to ever god? Sure, he's tied to Earth and sh but he's Zeus. Shouldn't he be able to handle this sh by himself if he's this engaged? Can we get a ruling on the power differential of these two in the movie so I can have some f***ing context? Rather than go for the death blow, this asshole kicks Darkseid backwards. Then the powerful Earthlings turn their attention to the much less important Parademons. And you know what? They deserve to have Darkseid and Steppenwolf come back in a few thousand years to beat their asses. Yes, they deserve to die, and I hope they burn in hell! Sure, this battle goes on longer in this cut, but it makes no more sense. At least Return of the King gave me a sense of scale and sh**. And that'll teach you to never blindly follow your evil leader into battle with our planet. Even though you were previously a regular inhabitant of a planet and Darkseid turned you into this being. Ha ha! Suck my trident, you chode! Men, Atlanteans, and Amazons. Each would enshrine and guard one of the three sleeping mother boxes. Sorry. Give me one. I just need to laugh a bit. Hang on. I won't be long, I swear. These goddamn Earth douchebags dug a four-foot-deep hole like a bunch of middle schoolers who accidentally did a manslaughter but were too stupid to know how to hide the weapon. Jesus goddamn Christ, this is stupid enough to count for ten sins instead of one. Oh, f*** my ass sideways. Runny puns. Sure, this happens to everyone at some point. You lose something in the space between the seats when you're driving and you want to grab that sh** before you forget it. But this asshole is driving this giant rig right through the heart of Central City. And while he's grabbing for his f***ing burger, he decides to speed up the truck rather than pull over to the curb, which is completely clear. This is a bigger villain than Darkseid, Steppenwolf, and Joker together. I f***ing while driving. How is this entire city not an enormous pile of wrecked cars? Okay, this is a pretty rad scene, even if we've already been through Quicksilver's time in a bottle and sweet dream sequences in that other franchise. But my major issue is why Flash has to break the f***ing glass. If he's this fast, can't he just open the door like a normal metahuman? He has time to be pervy about the flying lady and grab a hot dog later during the rescue. This poor pet store owner is going to have to fill out so many insurance forms, keeping your eyes wide open during this massive automobile crash. Is he... Is he really fixing her hair before actually saving her life? The f also, calculator watches. No one will be seated during the scene in which the parademons make the entire journey of dragging these f***o Atlanteans to shore. Seriously, I think Sir Lancelot's run to Swamp Castle was shorter than Monty Python's Holy Grail. Where is it? I still can't get over the fact that this is somehow considered a better looking Steppenwolf. He looks like one of the zombies from Will Smith's I Am Legend, surrounded by the nano armor of Megatron and Transformers the Whatevering, only with one tenth the budget, then topped off with glitter. Atlanteans can be tricky. That's Oceanist. This is the third person. Didn't Bruce email his sh to Diana a while ago, back at Batman v Superman? They're looking at the exact same file as she literally has already examined, presumably many times. He's a cyborg. Roll credit. Oh, sorry. I forgot he's the only one that's not getting a solo movie. Oh, Cyborg used to play football, you say? In the snow? At night with a multi-million dollar video scoreboard? Okay. I mean, it's your movie, so I'll take what you have to offer. I guess. Thank God we got to see Cyborg score the game-winning touchdown in his collegiate career. Honestly, I would have been lost over this character arc if we hadn't seen him single-handedly lead the Dillon Panthers to victory and getting John Voight fired in the process. I won't let you die. I, I, I won't allow it. Thinking that's how this works. If you were there, Mom would still be alive. Jesus, Vic, what kind of a conclusion is this to jump to? If Dad had been there, you probably would have left in the same car at the same time after the game, with the same weather conditions that led to the same car slamming into your asses. I know Mom wasn't necessarily watching the road before the wreck, but you got T-boned. How the hell would Silas being there have changed anything? If you can't stand looking at me, try listening. Sony, the voice recorder you can count on to bring your family back together after a horrific tragedy and years of distance. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> In the world of ones and zeros, you are the absolute master. Couldn't Silas have just said this to Victor? I know Victor's pissed at him, but if he's willing to listen to the tape, he could have listened to the actual person, right? Seems like Silas once again abandoned his boy so he could get back to the lab. Also, are we gonna just gloss over the fact that Silas gave the power of everything to a brooding, moody, hormonal dude in his early 20s? I know Victor was wise beyond his years before the accident, but he's still a young man, and he can literally control nukes now. Do we know what happens if he accidentally gets a cyboner? Does that blow up a covert submarine in the Arabian Sea? Cyborg can literally see anyone in the world's story, but he happens upon this one lady who has the most depressing life ever? What if he randomly pulled up the footage on, I don't know, a Kardashian? Would he still have had his hero's journey? Come here, Hitman. Touching hands through prison glass during visitation in a movie cliche. You know what criminal justice would be for me? 
my son not wasting his life. <laughs> what? Bruce Wayne throwing a batarang at this kid to force the kid to show that he is in fact the Flash may look cool, but it's still attempted murder. He's a Batman. How does Barry know who Batman is, but doesn't recognize Bruce Wayne when he introduced himself earlier? Sure, Bats is famous, but he's not on the same level as one of the richest and most powerful playboys in the world, right? It's like this layer of dimensional reality, and it seems to manipulate space-time. I call it the speed force. And that's all we need to know about that super important plot point until about six hours from now when it's actually used. God damn, this casual Bruce Wayne mobile is sexy as f**k, and I want to f**k it as much as I want to drive it. Ugh! Thrust! Ugh! Thrust! This car f**ks! Bruce has had time to research Barry, find him, travel to his home in Central City, and recruit him, but Diana's just getting around to Googling Victor's name. I lost someone I loved once. I found him again in 1984, which I guess was before this, so I lost someone I loved twice is what I meant to say. Ah, much safer than it was before. I mean, seriously, it's like humans have no secure locations anywhere on the planet. Sh why can't they put it in the bat cave or something? You're looking at the hottest thing on earth. That's what I said to my college. Exact words I said to my prom date. Hey, what the hell, man? That's kind of my thing. Sh Would this guy from a terrible movie be excellent at cinema sense? <laughs> How did Silas miss this f***ing thing when he walked in? Does it really take two parademons to carry a medium-sized scientist to the holding spot? Seems like this is a misallocation of resources. Steppenwolf clearly hasn't read the seven habits of highly effective people. I don't care how many soldiers the conjuring took away from home base. There should be more than a handful of f***ing guards around this incredibly important artifact that just came to life a few days ago. Shimmery Joe here shows up out of nowhere. That's fine, I guess, but I absolutely have to send the rapid editing cuts after his appearance because they are Mary Hart-like in their ability to give someone an accidental seizure. Who needs an actual CGI budget when you've got an underwater water battle. Just scribble a few sketches down on your Microsoft Surface, color the background with some neon fog, bada bing, bada boom, done. <laughs> Deus Aquamanica. Somehow, I guess because we are underwater, Aquaman is able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with f***ing Steppenwolf. She seems sad, but I feel like she could have done a lot more. Why do two undersea people need to form an air bubble to have a conversation? I knew her. Well, that makes one of us. Is this really the time to have this conversation after battling the biggest bad to ever bad here and losing a precious infinity stone just seconds ago? Your mother left you to save your life. I had no idea how much Moses was in this guy. <laughs> King parademons, man. Not only are they dicks to scientists, they're always leaving clues behind for metahumans to follow. No, man, you gotta insert it with the stripe facing up and to the right. Oh, man, I hope that random Russian family is okay. They will tell me what they know, or I will rip it from them. Or you can use that handy dandy spider doohickey you used on the Atlantean just a few minutes ago, asshole. I want to die. No, man, but you gotta keep going. What am I gonna do, quit? That's not an option. You gotta keep on keeping on. Life's a garden, dig it. You make it work for you. You never give up, man. That's my philosophy. You hear that in there? 